So another week, 482 hours. Feels like I'm actually making some progress though. Still boxing on with a little bit of wiring and tidying up, but here's a cool thing. Small miracles I know, but now I've got a light and I can actually see what it is that I'm doing in there rather than um, working around in the dark. It kind of feels like I'm cheating really, but uh, anyway, we're making progress. If anybody wants one of those things, whatever that is, uh, it does pretty much anything except put light out and it'll even stand up on its own when you point it straight up like that, otherwise it falls over. But uh, if anybody wants one of them, um, there's one for sale here. And when I say for sale, it means we'll probably pay you to take it away. It's standard, um, the firewall comes with these holes. They look like they're still holes, but they're not. They're actually filled in now with stainless. I'm not really a huge fan of having plastic going through a firewall, so I'm bogging them up with um, stainless steel on the back, and we'll probably use that space for something else. Um, this one here, I think that's normally for coolant water to go to the heater. And since we're not having that kind, because we've got this kind of heater, which seems a bit odd that it's on the same cutout system, but anyhow, um, unless it's got some other use that someone else knows about, that one's probably going to get filled in as well. I'm just going to take everything through here as far as electrics goes um, and then deal with the fire side of that once that's got everything in it. The panel at the start of the week looks like this. It'll probably look like that at the end of the week too, I dare say, at the current progress, but um, that's just about ready to go. I've filled in some of the holes around some of the flush rivets. Um, just to try and hide them a little bit more and that will be off to the painter or something and notice down here like I said in the last video I've made this cut out here for the screw um, to fit through there and I think that should be amply big enough. We had uh, a couple of these things from Garmin that give you uh, a free aviation database update it says off of void after 90 days after purchase. I don't think we're quite up to 90 days, but anyhow, didn't work. Bit of a shame. Never mind. Like I mentioned in the last video, Vicky's here, so that came with the obligatory shopping centre visit. Well, 4.95, five more, and we hit the half ton. No, that's not right. Half thousand mark. So uh, that'll either be today or tomorrow. Interesting times. So what else has been going on? Um, Vicky's been here, as I said in the last video, and so we've been out um, at San Bonner doing game drives. Absolutely awesome. Um, I deliberately didn't take much video because I just wanted to enjoy the experience rather than faffing around taking videos and photos and the like. And uh, I have to say it was just stunning. And if you haven't done a game drive in your life, seriously, it is something you should consider because some of the, some of the scenes are just unbelievable. Anyway, um, moving on, so what else has been going on? We got our seats back from the um, powder coater, um, average I'd say. I'd love to say they came out really good but uh, more of a commercial grade finish than, than anything else but it um, shouldn't be too bad. It's really only just for the little pieces here and there like the sides of the seats and things that just show up um, if you catch it on the right angle and you know some of these brackets and the like um, probably find some black in eye screws or something to fill in there um, although I think that probably looks that looks fine they obviously had never seen a piano hinge in their life and so they powder coated it which was fantastic because then it doesn't work so I've had to break all that off um, the mechanism here um, I put that in Sling had given us three of one type of the uh, cable with a pin and one of the other rather than two and two. So I had to butcher one and make it fit like the other one because it just takes too long to get it sorted out. So um, that, that still works, that's fine. In here we had the, um, the, the aircraft painter, he's going to paint the outside of it, um, come and have a look. Also gave him the brackets for under the instrument panel and another bracket I'd made for the, um, uh, where is it, that thing there for the alternate static, which I'm going to mount up just under, hidden under here. Um, so that's kind of out of the way. So he's going to paint them for us so we can get on with installing them. Oh, now these things, what a drag. So they're the brackets that go in the back here. Um, what's the best way to look at it? If we look at the 
uh, right hand side there you can see the bracket and the, the rear seat sits against that and on the back of it it has this bracket here that that mounts onto the side channel of the airframe well oh, yeah it didn't fit anyway so I uh, I this one on the on the left hand side of the airplane I kind of butchered it to make that work and it's it's quite functional um, it's not the prettiest thing you've ever seen but it'll work um, by the time I got to the right hand side I thought ah it's just easier to make the bracket myself so the bracket in behind there I made myself and it fits way better and in the long run it was probably easier but uh, anyhow it'll be fine you'll never see that one over on that side at any rate and the one on this side you'll really only see it um, if you're looking for it when you open the baggage door it'll be just sitting in here but uh, I want to get this thing um, probably powder coated or painted now. Another funny thing that happened so there um, you can see right behind me you can see things up on the wall that's a shop that's in the same building it's just it's right next door um, it's actually in the same building and in actual fact you can access it from the cafe um, but the main entrance is out on the street but they sell mountain climbing gear there's my finger there it is they sell mountain climbing gear amongst other things so interestingly um, a couple of weeks ago um, a well-known individual from Sling visited that store um, and I know that because the manager of that store told me so that was interesting anyway moving right along so here's another thing um, of interest which is kind of funny so the the canopy this piece all around here that comes with this bracket here this bracket here molded in and that's so the gas strut which holds the canopy door open can mount to there so that's pretty cool that comes with the kit also with the kit comes the gas strut itself and the bolts that go on each end so that's pretty cool what isn't included in the kit so we're told is the bracket that mounts on the door so not quite sure what anybody would normally do with that so everything except that is included in the kit and that apparently is an optional extra that you have to pay another 50 bucks for isn't that just awesome um, lots of little things still waiting for brake lines they should be here soon uh, Glenn has discovered that his last minute purchase of the Behringer brakes didn't work because there's a month delivery on them so uh, that's going to mess things around so that'll be the next time I visit will be for those um, hopefully we're going to get the brake lines though um, because they did have some of them so I'll be able to mount all this them in here and make a plan to get them through under the floor and then I can hack the floor down so that'll be ready to go um, what else is happening I bent this thing here up um, which is the catch for the door as per the plans and that makes it if I get it as per the plans and so if I do that whoops I can do that and and it does does that so the yeah the idea of how they've got that is stupid but anyway um, so what I'm going to do is up inside well that would have done the world of good up inside here um, I'm going to put a little nylon piece so it'll slide in and I'll make it like a bit of a ramp so it'll slowly draw it tight <coughs> excuse me so it'll slowly draw it tight and then it'll have um, rubber on here I've only just put one little bit there because obviously the thing's going to be painted first um, and then it'll just have rubber on here that it just pulls tight because this is a good design in as much that you can't sort of leave it open and go flying because it's going to be really obvious that it's open because it'll be hanging down here um, but the downside to it of course is that when it's parked up if it doesn't seal really well it's going to get rain in there so um, got to make sure that that does not happen um, some other things um, Glenn vacuumed the plane out which is really good um, and he moved that I don't know why anyway it doesn't matter that's fine I'll, I shall move that um, been making that fit on the cowling so that fits a lot better now than it did which is cool I had to add a little bit actually because I just took a little bit too much much off out in one corner but it's okay fixed all that up 
So here's some cowling again um, up on its rear end. But one thing I find quite curious is in here there's a, there's a door that goes on this piece and there's this hinge. Well, you might actually even be able to make out that that is not straight. It's got a big curve to it and you can't actually make hinges go around corners. Uh, not these sort anyway. You'd have to have two independent hinges so it hinges on a straight line. So that, if I put that here, you can actually see there's a huge gap in the middle because that both this piece and the door is curved. Now it's pretty bendable, which means that if I put that in as it was, it would, every time you open the door, it would force that into a straight line when you get it to open. And when you close it again, it would go, it would snap back to its curve. Um, that may be the intention. I don't know. It seems a little bit odd. So um, in order to, to fill that in, it's quite a lot of filling. I'm, I'm sort of trying to do it maybe left-handed here, which isn't really working for me, but um, it would be a huge amount of filling to fill that, to make that straight. Alternatively, I could put some angle in here and pull that into a straight line, but I'm not sure if that would make the cowling look a bit messed up because there's sort of like a nice even fed curve through there and that's what happens when you do that because the hinge pin drops out. Um, there's a nice smooth fed curve that runs through there so it would be kind of a shame to, to straighten that out too. So not really quite sure what I'm going to do there. I think that generally what happens is people just attach it on the curve and just get used to the fact that as you open it, you force it straight. Um, and it would sort of snap past the over center as it, as it did it and hold it open, which I suppose from a wind perspective would be handy. I'm not really sure if I'm crazy about it or not because I don't know quite how it will go with the rivets um, long term. But anyhow, that's something to think about. And there it is, the uh, uh, auspicious or inauspicious occasion. 500 hours. I have no intention of getting that to 999. We'll be uh, long done by then. So this mess in here is just on the start to being tidied up. There's my uh, science experiment, but that's actually um, going pretty well. Got to tighten up all those. Just made a very, very slow start and tidying up these things, put my other clamp in. Um, so yeah, I've only put two ties on there at the moment, so more to go, but uh, we're getting there. I've also put the seat rails in here. Um, went in reasonably well in the end. There was a couple of holes down the end that didn't line up, but made all that fit. So that's that was pretty straightforward. Um, the side slides I'm not gonna put in until I've got the pieces in here. Glenn can't make his mind up on um, making the final decision for the upholstery so without that I can't put them in but that's cool got plenty of other things to do in the meantime that can wait till the next time I'm back here's Harry he's he's um, he's got this thing on his lip the caterpillar on his lip because he's becoming a porn star so it's his porn stash so that's it 500 hours catch you next time